Sorry, Steve. This is gonna have to be edited out. <laughs> I might have had a few at this point. I'm gonna include this just because B-roll, and you seem to have fun with my B-roll, so have fun with that. Basilica. This is a basil based cocktail. It uses Saint Germain, lemon juice, simple syrup, gin, and then I actually should call for Peychaud's bitters. I don't have any at the moment, uh, but I'm going to use the orange bitters from Beehive Bitters, the caramelized orange bitters, and some Angostura because I love Angostura. It's fantastic. There's another cocktail coming that uses a lot of Angostura here shortly, so we're going to do that instead. So what we're going to do is I'll use this four large basil leaves. I don't have large because my basil plant is uh, I'd rather starved for sunlight because I live below ground. So we are instead going to use like six small basil leaves. And oh, that smell. I wish you could smell this because that is the most amazing smell on the face of the planet. We're going to do four large basil leaves. Half ounce of lemon juice. And I really wish you could smell that. That basil smells just amazing. And a half ounce of simple syrup. We're gonna muddle that. Should grab it. Don't do this often enough that. Uh, Anytime I do actually need to do this, I could probably really forget beforehand. And the more you muddle this basil, that I've actually never made this cocktail, so this is the first. The more you make this cocktail, the, the more you muddle that basil, the better it's going to be. Is, is my guess. Again, I guess. But yeah. Water off that wood. Okay, and then we're going to add to that two ounces of gin. I have selected the the uh, Temple of the Moon gin from Water Pocket Distilling. We talk about these guys a lot on Spirit Seers, and I absolutely adore them. They are fantastic. Alan is the best people on the face of the planet, uh, and his gin definitely reflects that. So let's uh, let's add two ounces of that. Let's make up for what I just spilled over the counter. And then let's add half ounce of flour. A fresh bottle. I've never actually had a bottle of Saint Germain before, but uh, first time for everything. Let's add a dash of the orange bitters. This is again the Beehive caramelized orange bitters. I always have a bottle of this around because it is so good. It is fantastic. It's got a lot of the orange flavor, but it's it's got a little bit of sweetness behind the, the caramelized element as well. That just like even the smell from just pouring that just oh so good. I use this in a lot of my cocktails. Anytime I use something that, that calls for orange bitters. Uh, or if it's something where the orange will benefit from that, I absolutely use the orange, the caramelized orange bitters. Do two sugar cubes, uh, sugar cubes, ice cubes, and we're gonna do. We're gonna cover my living room with ice. The standard is that I've seen recently is to use one whole and one cracked cube. It kind of seems to be what everybody else is doing, and 
I, I agree, it's fantastic. It ends up with, uh, you end up with a large cube that, that acts as a mixer, but you also have the cracked cube that adds a lot of the a lot of the dilution that, that brings a lot of the more subtle flavors forward as well. So that's, that's what I've been doing a lot these days, and I highly recommend it. If you can, um, you can get the large ice cube forms from Amazon for like $10. I highly recommend it. It's worth it to me. Six, uh, six cubes, and that's more than enough for a single person like myself. We're going to shake it up. Straight that into a coupe glass and get the mess of that going there. And again, double straining is kind of the standard these days. You probably can't see this, but there's a lot of pieces of basil and ice chips and all sorts of stuff. You just end up with a lot of smooth cocktail if you double strain. Again, highly recommended. Uh, then we're going to, if I can find a larger, we're just gonna fold that on top. Actually going to kind of like, just fold that on top. And cheers, this is the basilica. Basil is very far forward. It is, it is very much the predominant flavor, and, and that's in spite of all the strong flavors that are actually being used here: the, the lemon juice, the sage the gin, and the two bitters. Like the, the fact that the basil sits that far forward in this cocktail is absolutely incredible. I absolutely love this. Um, I've had this this plant since November. Generally, I kill these things because I pull all the leaves off of it. Somehow, I think with COVID nineteen, I've just not been doing a whole lot. But the, that has survived. I'm amazed. That survived. I usually rub all of these off of it. But uh, it's... So you get the gin. Uh, the, the gin kind of midway through, after the, the basil kind of settles a little bit. You get the gin, then you get, on the finish, you get a little bit of the elder elderflower flavor with a little bit of a tinge of the bitter from the the two different bitters, a little bit of a, a citrus note, and then it goes into the Angostura flavor. And I don't even know how to describe Angostura. It's it's Angostura. It's it's a very very identifiable, very unique flavor. If you've not experienced that, pour a little bit of Angostura into a little bit of soda water, and have a sip of that. It's it's fantastic. I, I do that through summer. It's really enjoyable. If you don't want to do something that's alcoholic, and sometimes I don't. That is an absolutely fantastic cocktail. I've never made this before tonight, before right now, and that is gonna have to happen again. This is maybe my summer drink for this season. So, yeah, keep the spirit.